If you like what we do here on Skiba News Nation, please like and subscribe and also share with others so that we can grow the biggest truth-seeking community on the internet. Huge shout out to all of our Patreon supporters. We couldn't do this show without you, so I just wanted to say thank you. And if you want to help support us, go to patreon.com forward slash Skiba News Nation. I want to know what the truth is. And I hope that people, my son, anybody, if my name comes up, whether you like me, whether you agree with me or not, at least you can respect the fact that he's on a quest for truth. He's on a quest for truth. Welcome to Skiba News Nation. Bringing you unfiltered views, news, interviews, discussions, and more. And now, here's your host, Jeremiah Skiba, award-winning musician and son of Rob Skiba. Hey, Skiba News Nation family, can you hear Charlie purring? Yeah. Hey, Skiba News Nation family, welcome to episode 83 of Skiba News Nation, your weekly source of the latest news, controversial topics, conspiracies, forgotten history, and so much more. <laughs> I'm your host, Jeremiah Skiba, and this is my cat, Charlie, who wants to be a part of this. Uh, and we'll be talking about CERN turning on during eclipse, Baltimore Bridge cyber attack, BRICS crypto, the recent outpour of whistleblowers and citizen journalists. How AI can manipulate 366 million people in seconds, porn fair, and prayers. On all new Opus Corner and for history, we'll be talking about squatters are moving to a home near you and our latest adventure to the Oddities and Curiosities Expo. Another great truth talk segment, memes and much more, so subscribe and stay tuned. Jeez, man. Now as always, Charlie, stop it. <laughs> Stop it. <laughs> You're cracking me up. As always, I'd like to introduce my co-host, Jake Grant. Welcome, Jake. How are you doing? Hey. <laughs> Enjoying the sweet putters of Charlie's purring right now. I that's know. that's what I'm doing. Charlie, can you, he, he just wanted to say hello. Anyways, how have things been? Going good, man. We're uh, almost halfway funded for the Tribe Kickstarter, and we have until April 20th uh, for people to get their copies, so I'm pretty uh, stoked about that. And we also have uh, a bunch of news on the upcoming Eclipse, and my family and I are planning to go out and see it, so it's going to be pretty cool uh, wow. coming up this week. Sounds good. Cool, man. Well, do you want to play that quick pr promo for your game? Yeah, here's a quick promo. Awesome, bro. We got some great current news for us today. Yeah, we're going to have a fun segment today going through 
eclipses and all the drama around that topic, whether it's something to be worried about or not, um, as well as some other really interesting current events and news. So look forward to getting into it. Awesome, man. Let's dive in. All right, Jeremiah. So it is, as of recording this, uh, it is April 3rd. And of course, we're going to be premiering this episode on April 5th. And you guys, two or three days later, are going to have the eclipse happening on April 8th. So I wanted to take today's episode and spend some time walking through eclipses in history, eclipses in conspiracy, eclipses in biblical possible prophecy, and just the concept of, you know, what's going on, why are people talking about this eclipse going over North America on April 8th. And, and I don't want to just jump right on to the bandwagon of, oh, you know, it's, you know, the doom and gloom, you know, the signs in the heaven. Um, but also, there are some interesting things about it that, you know, are worth bringing up. And if not for the simple fact that all of the, the stuff being talked about surrounding this topic of the eclipse can influence people's minds and the behaviors of mankind. And we see this, uh, I want to start off with this article, eclipses that marked the start of the Iroquois Confederacy. Very interesting. Um, uh, my wife, Alice, regularly brings home Indian Time News Journal, a publication from the Mohawk Nation Territory. All right. Well, what's interesting in this article is we know this much. During a ratification council held at Gunandagan near modern-day Victor, New York, the sky darkened in a total or near-total eclipse. The time of the day was afternoon as councils were held between noon and sunset. The time of the year was either second hoeing, early July, or green corn, late August to early September. Thus, we must look for an eclipse path that would totally cover Ganondon, Ganondagan between July and September in mid-afternoon. And so, uh, the ratification of this council meeting and some of the decisions that happened uh, could have been, you know, influenced by, you know, the association with the signs in the sky and decisions that happen here on Earth. So we have kind of a, a bunch of, you know, stuff. Uh, okay, so here's one example, right? Uh, an eclipse that happened possibly during the start of the Iroquois Confederacy. Um, here's an article we have from the BBC. How eclipses have shaped history. Every so often an eclipse has shaped the course of pivotal events for better and for worse. Um, in uh, one of the first widely read novels about time travel, published in 1889, Mark Twain wrote about a man whose life was saved by an eclipse. All right. Um, there's also the earliest known example of an eclipse provoking a different outcome was during a battle more than 2,000 years ago, explains Mark Littman of the University of Tennessee, Knoxville. Writing in 430 BC, the Greek historian Herodotus told of a war between the Lydians who occupied regions of modern-day Turkey and the Medes, an ancient Iranian people. After six years of fighting with stalemates, victories, losses on both sides, and opponents met again, this time, however, the day suddenly changed into night, wrote Herodotus. The Medes and Lydians, when they observed the change, ceased fighting and were alike anxious to have terms of peace to agree on. Oh, very interesting. So they pinpointed that uh, alignment um, with that particular historical event. It wouldn't be the last time eclipses proved piv pivotal. Fast forward more than a thousand years and Christopher Columbus was on his final voyage. In 1503, he beached his sink ships on Jamaica with his crews in despair, most of his anchors lost, and his vessel worm-eaten, enough to be as full of holes as honeycomb. Oh, danger was always present. One of the scout parties was overpowered and captured by hostile locals when investigating Jamaica's easternmost point. To make matters worse, in January 1504, some of the crew mutinied and fled onto the island. After weeks of this, the locals lost their patience, tolerance gave way, and contempt and hatred in the trade of food ceased. But as the end beckoned, Columbus remembered an astronomical event was approaching, a lunar eclipse. Oh, okay, so he used a lunar eclipse uh, as a prophetic sign to these people because he understood the calculations of the alignment. 
Uh, so that's very interesting. Uh, it worked. The fearful locals relented. Um, what's interesting here is the image uh, is depicting a solar eclipse, um, even though it said specifically it was a moon eclipse. That's very interesting. Through modern eyes, it's a troubling story. The indigenous people probably had every right to shun the marauding Europeans. Um, all right. Intriguing a lunar eclipse, right? Uh, let me see here. We have many other examples of uh, how, you know, these interesting eclipses line up. And, and I wanted to point out the significance of how they influence decision making here on Earth. That while they might be signs in the heavens, whether you give it meaning or not, um, I believe that they influence the minds of mankind. And in our collective subconscious, there is a reaction when a large amount of people see a sign in the sky, whether it means you know people start being more frugal, start preparing for hard times, whether it encourages people to go buck wild because, oh, we got to get our partying in at the end of the world, right? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, here's another in interesting thing. Not only humans, but animals. Keep an eye on your animals during the eclipse because, uh, you know, it throws cycles out. And it's very interesting. You can see how animals will react during the actual moment of totality. And they'll be uneasy. And animals that are usually uh, awake will go to sleep. Um, so it has a an interesting effect just on not just on people, but also the animal kingdom as it witnesses this strange phenomenon. Very interesting. So uh, here's, of course, where we're seeing the line cross over North America. These are the main cities that apparently it's crossing directly over. Um, very interesting. Um, here's some travel news. No size weight permitted to travel allowed on Eclipse Day. So they're restricting travel and commerce um, in the Texas Department of Motor Vehicles uh, for preparation for the eclipse. Uh, many places have been declaring states of emergency. Uh, apparently Niagara Falls is somehow able to declare a state of um, emergency. I thought it was a waterfall, not a, <laughs> not a governor. Yeah. But um, I mean, I guess it's just the location, but it's funny how they worded this. Uh, so... Many people, many states are declaring states of emergency to prepare for the onslaught of eclipse lookers. Um, and I think there's a lot of things that uh, we should be, you know, very aware of. Um, there have been terror attacks happening in the world. Uh, there's a massive amount of people heading towards the center of the United States to watch this event. Uh, it is a time to be on red alert in terms of if you live in one of these hotspot areas people are coming to um just be aware uh, i mean the reason they're declaring states of emergency is so they can implement use of the national guard to help facilitate traffic and and help in the case of any emergencies um but <laughs> it begs the question you know what's going to happen on the day you know and i in 2020 uh prophecy is you know 100 percent you know, in hindsight, <laughs> but um, whenever you talk about the things that are happening, uh, we can only speculate right now, but it's it's good to be aware. Um, New York inmates are suing to watch the solar eclipse after the state orders the prisons locked down. So I know I heard that one. It, it's funny. Oh, man. States of emergency in terms of just the locations, but now prisons are in a state of a state of emergency because of the I guess it's because uh, all the guards don't want to be working inside. They want to go watch the eclipse. So they're like, all right, everybody's going locked down because we're all going out to watch the eclipse. You guys are in prison, so you just hang tight. <laughs> um, very interesting. Um, here's a Kingdom Intelligence briefing article, which gets more into the uh, kind of the esoteric, biblical, prophetic association with the eclipse day. Uh, Eclipse Rocket CERN Thelema and the Book of Joel. Uh, there is an occult convergence happening. Uh, uh, the eclipse on April 8th. NASA rockets shoot up to test stuff. CERN, the followers of Thelema or, or Crowley. Um, are we living in the time of Joel and Revelation 9 or a prophetic 
temporal echo. <laughs> the book of Joel provides a call to repentance, a message of deliverance and restoration and empowerment in the last days. Uh, so anyways, I would highly encourage you guys. I really have enjoyed Dr. Michael Lake's Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. Uh, he, uh, you know, he has interacted with your dad over the years, Jeremiah. Um, so he has some really great uh, research. And so I would encourage anybody who's interested in more of a esoteric breakdown in the association with the last days to check out this particular podcast, which is on Kingdom Intelligence Briefing, uh, KIB episode 433. All right. So here's the one that all the conspiracy theorists are freaking out about. CERN to test world's most powerful particle accelerator during April's solar eclipse to search for invisible matter that secretly powers our universe. Oh, how interesting. Now, uh, in terms of this CERN kickstarting, you know, and, and how the occult symbolism and this high day of the eclipse is significant in terms of world events, things that might be played out on the world stage, uh, natural disasters, uh, and the theories of, you know, what happens when they, you know, rev that thing up and then they dump the energy into the earth? Is it a catalyst for earthquakes? Is it something that affects the world? Uh, is it the thing that created the Mandela effect? Uh, are they trying to do Mandela effect 2.0 starting April 8th? I don't know, Jeremiah, but, uh, check out this first video which uh, breaks down some of the association with uh, the Eclipse and CERN getting kickstarted. There is something more supernatural on the drawing board at CERN than what is being admitted. Even Adam Barker of Tech Bubble wrote of CERN a while back that with the LHC, CERN are expecting to find other dimensions and open portals to these dimensions. Uh, if you have the image of Stargate in your head right now, you're spot on, that's what he said. And then he went on to draw parallels to the biblical story of Jacob's ladder. Um, perhaps you remember the dream that says, Behold, there was a ladder set up on the earth, and the top of it reached to heaven. And behold, the angels of God were ascending and descending on it. Then Jacob wakes up from his sleep and he says, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I did not know it. Um, and he was afraid. And he says, How awesome is this place? This is none other than the house of God, and this is the gate of heaven, Genesis 28. Now this ladder uh, described in the first book of the Bible describes something like a portal from heaven to earth through which God's angels, interdimensional and spiritual beings from another reality were traveling. Um, when Jacob wakes up, he refers to the location as a gate, much like today's trendy terms, gateway or stargate. Uh, one of CERN's goals is to recreate Jacob's Ladder, according to uh, Barker, and to reopen a portal. Now, Sergio Bertolucci, who is the official director for research and scientific computing at CERN, he was asked a while back about this extra-dimensional doorway by The Register, which is a London and New York operated science and technology journal. And he didn't hesitate with an enlightening response. He said, yes out of this door might come something, or we might send something through it. Now, prophecy in numerous parts of the Bible refer to a coming day when portals will be opened and spiritual entities are going to pass through and come to the earth. Now, if that's true, and if those verses are accepted for their literal meaning and not written off as some kind of poetic allegory as some scholars have claimed, then the idea of CERN playing with gateways is a major concern. Uh, this is Houston. Uh, say again, please. And if, as CERN claims, they're only out to explore space, time, matter, particles, and the origin of our known universe and planets from exclusively a scientific or Darwinian-related perspective, if their agenda is 
unrelated to Bible prophecy entirely, then what is it with all this mystical symbolism that they knowingly are associating themselves with? Wouldn't it be more appropriate for them just to proudly display a polished statue of a particle or some artist depiction of the Big Bang instead of the statue of Shiva? For those who have not yet heard about this controversial piece of art that CERN proudly exhibits between buildings 39 and 40 near the main uh, building of their operation, it stands as really the most visible and celebrated imagery behind their work, Shiva. This is the Hindu god of destruction. In 2004, the government of India, which has had a long-standing friendship with leaders behind the CERN project even before the completion of the Large Hadron Collider, they gifted CERN with this bronze work of an art uh, depicting Shiva as uh, not a Raja, the lord or sometimes king of the dance. This dance that Shiva performs uh, uh, in the sculpture is the one that provides the source of the creation cycle in Hindu mythology, the preservation of all life and existence and the termination of all life and existence. The Rudra Tandava is a dance that especially displays Shiva's um, sadistic personality as he rains down the ultimate destruction upon a weary planet. The plaque at the side beside the statue, however, reads in part, hundreds of years ago, Indian artists created visual images of dancing Shivas in a beautiful series of bronzes. In our time, physicists have used the most advanced technology to portray the patterns of the cosmic dance. The metaphor of the cosmic dance thus unifies ancient mythology, religious art, and modern physics. So right there out in the open for all to see is a direct correlation between the Hindu perception of Shiva hundreds of years ago, which is the concept of destroyer uh, that I explained a moment ago, and our time unifying, quote, ancient mythology, religious art, and modern physics. Something is going on. You think everything's a conspiracy. Everything is. Additionally, and perhaps even more important, there's a significant section of CERN that is built upon the St. Genus Poili, which is a commune in Ain, uh, a department of France. In Roman times, the St. Genus Poili was called a Paliacum, um, but the town and a temple were dedicated there in ancient times to Apollyon, the destroyer the Shiva Horus, if you will. Apollyon uh, is also the angel of the bottomless pit, referred to in Revelation 9-11. And then there is a connection between CERN and the Gothard Base Tunnel, the GBT, which is the world's deepest and longest tunnel system, consisting of two parallel passages, each moving in a single direction on a single track. The GBT passes directly beneath St. Gothard's Pass, a strategic um, north-south corridor that connects northern and southern Switzerland. Um, the connection to the Large Hadron Collider has to be made primarily because of the bizarre opening ceremony that was live streamed to the entire world on June 1, 2016 that included this highly occult demonic dance with characterization um, beginning with a call to unite the religions of the world by conducting an interfaith blessing of the tunnel beside a statue of St. Barbara, the patron saint of miners. Um, following the blessing at the statue of St. Barbara, the press, along with visiting dignitaries, also paid tribute to the nine miners who had lost their lives during construction of the uh, tunnel. Uh, Bodillo's southern portal provided the visiting dignitaries a disturbing parade, really, of miners, erotic dancers, zombies, fallen angels, all of whom were obeying the call of what they called the shepherd, whose yodels 
invoked the appearance of the event's uh, infernal master of ceremonies, a goat man, um, portrayed by a young and energetic dancing male. This creature is shown with a Baphomet headdress, a goat, uh, a goat demon's head, if you will, and a goat body costume with a hairy pelt. And then it had a formal tuxedo over the top. Um, the imagery was heavily evocative of the German and barbarian uh, Christmas demon known as Krampus. Now, according to tradition, Krampus accompanies St. Nicholas on his midwinter rounds with the intent to steal boys and girls, putting them into a basket carried on his back, uh, or he may decide to beat them with branches for being naughty. Uh, Maurice Bruce published a book on pre-Christian Alpine traditions in 1958, and he had this to say about the half-goat, half-demon entity. There seems to be little doubt as to the true identity for, in no other form is the full regalia of the horn god of the witches so well preserved. The birch, apart from its phallic significance, may have a connection with the initiation rites of certain witch covens, rites which entailed binding and scourging as a form of mock death. The chains could have been introduced in a Christian attempt to bind the devil, but again, they could be a remnant of pagan initiation rites. Many show the goat man uh, in formal dress and a tuxedo style cutaway um, formal coat and trousers, but with his usual horned goat face and always with his tongue extended. Now this tongue out pose seems to be popular with ancient uh, gods, whether they're Mayan, Hindu, Babylonian, Egyptian, Greek, or even British. Um, for some reason, the coat of arms from the Prince of Wales supports both a lion and a unicorn with their tongues extended, for instance. More than likely, this tongue position represents sex magic, fornicating with fallen angels. The ancient symbol of the horned god, referenced by Maureen Bruce uh, in the quote that I made a moment ago, it allows us to connect our goat demon from the opening ceremony uh, at the uh, GBT to CERN. Despite the fact that the Large Hadron Collider uh, sits three to four hours down a twisty road from the location, the Horn God's circular logic and passion for human depravity, uh, Hernunos, as is sometimes called, or Cernunos, uh, or the Green Man of British lore, uh, simply had to make an appearance at this occult ceremony. Josh Peck and I, uh, and many other researchers, have written extensively regarding the in-game plans for tunneling beneath the earth and smashing atoms to smithereens as nothing more than a thinly veiled attempt to open portals. But the opening ceremony at Gothard uh, made it clear that these portals are intended to do something else, and that is to release demonic entities. The twin tunnels of the Gothard base tunnel uh, commence with twin portals on a single track. These northward and southward journeys symbolize the death, birth, death cycle of the green man who dies in the fall and winter and rises in the spring summer. The tunnel ceremony was all about sex rites and rebirth, leading to a new world order that's a complete reversal of the Judeo-Christian design. Uh, this included the triple goddess and the horned god, along with human sacrifice and a return to pagan worship, all of which lie at the center of this nauseating ritual play, which you can probably still watch uh, on YouTube. Dancers dressed as miners climbed this rock face and they dug into the earth, so to speak, to unveil what was beneath the earth, a great machine uh, formed from human arms that rotated and churned into various shapes and design, uh, many of which resembled the Large Hadron Collider at CERN. Once this opening was achieved, the miners stripped off their orange jump shoot uh, attire uh, and uh, took up arms, that is, they used staves to perform a dance routine that looked like warfare.
It was this forensic dance that aroused a giant. So clearly the endeavor um, connected to CERN is far more than Switzerland's braggadocio about an engineering feat. The connection between CERN and ritualistic summoning of a sleeping giant, the horned god of Cernunos or even Melkart, uh, both are types of the rising dying god and Melkart slept for half the year which may be why Elijah told the priests of Baal to call louder because he might be sleeping. Of course, I can only speculate, um, but I note the connection between Nimrod, Apollo, and Abaddon, Apollyon at CERN, and the history of the region uh, are all highly curious. Apollo was worshipped by the Romans of that area as well as the Greeks and in central France. Apollo was equated with the Celtic god Atep Omerus. Um, these two characters were combined to create Apollo Atep Omerus, which can be translated as great horseman or possessing a great horse. In the Celtic belief, horses were closely related to the sun. The interesting thing to note is the connection between this idea of Apollo being associated with horses in France, uh, where part of the LHC and CERN resides, and what the book of Revelation states about Abaddon, where it says, and the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses prepared unto battle, and on their heads were, as it were, crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men, and they had a king over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon." End quote. I also note that Revelation chapter 9, after describing how these devil worshipers will be judged during the Great Tribulation period, it ends in verse 21 saying, neither repented they of their murders, nor of their sorceries, which is the Greek pharmakia, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. Now, pharmakia is the word that describes the ancient occultic effort to use mind-expanding drugs during rituals in order to open a doorway for making contact with unseen supernatural entities. So, given these descriptions, is it possible that CERN will have something to do with the opening of the bottomless pit described in Revelation 9. Interesting. <laughs> so, anyways, that's why that's why people are freaking out that they're turning on CERN during this eclipse on April eighth. Um, now, you know, we know that in Genesis, the sun, moon, and stars were set in the heavens for signs, seasons, and appointed moedim. And also, we see in history there are some uh, solar eclipses that aligned with certain biblical figures and events. Um, we have the story of Nineveh, where Jonah went and prophesied for them to repent. Uh, hey, you guys are doing wrong here. And uh, according to historians, right around the time that Jonah would have been showing up to call the people to, in Nineveh to repent, a solar eclipse passed overhead. Could it have been something that changed the hearts of the people because they started having terrible thoughts of the end of days, right? And they made the, it made them more susceptible for uh, changing their wicked ways, right? And also you have the words of Yahushua, uh, you know, wicked and adulterous generation seeks a sign, but no sign will be given to them except the sign of the prophet Jonah. You know, of course, in that circumstance, he was referring to himself as the Messiah and the three days and three nights that he would spend in the earth, just as Jonah spent in the belly of the well. But could there be some association with the eclipse and the timeline of the mission of Jonah, so to speak. Um, and all of that 
you know, said, uh, we can now, I think, uh, Jeremiah, did you have any thoughts about the eclipse? Are you guys going to watch it? What do you think? I don't know what we're doing yet. I think it'd be interesting. I think it's midday. Opa? Yeah, it's around one o'clock for the total. Yeah, somebody said we should live stream it, but we'll see. No, I don't know about that. Yeah, there, I heard NASA was going to shoot some rockets up the same time frame to see stuff. I heard CERN was kicking off. Uh, you know, it, you have all these, uh, you know, things that are just like, you know. Anyways, uh, let's carry on to our next story here. And uh, this is um, the a breakdown, a redacted segment on the Baltimore Bridge disaster that we covered last week. So you guys check out this clip. It, now we're getting some in, in, uh, in information on the infrastructure side of this and how big this is and how well this might have looked like if you were going to carry out a terrorist attack on the United States, if you were going to carry out an infrastructure attack on the United States, where would you go? Well, according to experts, whoever did this and carried out this cyber attack chose the best spot in the United States to do this. Uh, because now we're getting, as Michael Yan tweeted earlier today, this is an economic, um, this is basically an economic nuclear strike on the United States. If you think about how the inflow of ships coming in are now affected and the outflow of ships leaving the port of Baltimore are, are struck. A major infrastructure hit, as he writes. The port of Baltimore is a major port serving Baltimore, Washington, D.C. All of the shipping north of the bridge is now trapped in place. No other shipping can get in. The tunnel shown um, in different images, of course, has a height and hazardous cargo restriction, so it can't get out. So all of the hazardous cargo. We learn now, of course, the dozens of shipping containers filled with hazardous chemicals and those that have now leached chemicals into the harbor. It's going to be... First of all, it took years to build the Francis Scott Key Bridge. How long will it take for them to clear this debris and get it open to at least get back to some sort of normalcy? It's going to be months, well, if not years, until they can do this. Go ahead, David. And you have to think, like, think of how much stuff actually comes to the East Coast because they'd have to go all the way around to the West Coast to ship things. They're, like, that's a major, major, major port. Right. It's absolutely it's coming from. It, yeah, it's the second busiest, second most important port, uh, in, important port in the United States. Uh, and so they really hit it the right target at the right time and caused the maximum amount of damage here. And for those of you that think that this is just one simple incident here, it also affects the United States and military and the fast response ships that, of course, that are trapped inside of this port right now. In addition to which, if you think about the cyber attacks here and how this is, this is not just this attack. Uh, this is multiple helicopter crashes. This is multiple attacks on uh, other targets in the United States. And you're seeing it, but we're not getting any attention paid to it. Like why there's no like discussion about this? Because I think it may be, they don't want to admit that we're vulnerable, that we're this vulnerable now to these types of attacks. It's kind of unbelievable as Joshua Reed friend of the show points out the USS Fitzgerald 2017 the USS John McCain um, uh, was also struck 2017 the USS Connecticut in 2021 how many mil military aircraft have now crashed as a result of cyber attacks uh, in the past decade how many helicopter incidents he says over the past five years and we now know going back to 2013 the ability to hack these vehicles going back as i've reported here on the show when i did that investigative <laughs> report about the cars being taken over by hackers and driving people into a tree and they took over the car that i was driving to show how that all unfolded it was legitimate it absolutely happened so you know this idea of a foreign entity tracking and cracking into u.s military software systems is is very concerning and I think there's this sort of willful ignorance right now in the United States about this. Then we see this other, uh, this other bridge being struck, this um, uh, other port being struck just a few uh, over the weekend, of course, another one, another barge hitting um, the, uh, a pylon in one of these, uh, what, what I'm trying to say, bridge pylon, um, also was attacked and hit. Um, do you think that these are just coincidences and I think more people need to be paying attention to this. Also, we learned the Baltimore Police Marine Unit was cut from the city budget, according to Chesapeake Bay Magazine. So the individuals who would be policing those waters 
had that slashed from the budget so we don't have those eyeballs on that area anymore uh, the whole the you know the whole thing absolutely stinks here and so i think we're going to be learning more and more about just how devastating this is economically to the united states and when we see more of these will they be linked and will there be connections to this i hope the biden administration though is honest with us we know that this was a cyber attack i hope that they will come out and tell us this is what happened this is who was responsible here is how it happened but they're not telling us this no they're ready to move on they have they immediately were ready to move on and not tell us about this yeah um even without an investigation so the ntsb of course didn't even arrive on the ship for two days later but the biden administration that morning is able to tell us there's nothing to see here don't worry about it move on mm -hmm. yeah i was anyway. just going to point that out that's the that's the thing that i constantly come back to on this is that they they knew they knew the answer before they got the test so that right. just that implies cheating to me right <laughs> you know but I think the update here is just how economically bad this is and to keep an eye on other bridge attacks, other infrastructure attacks from a cyber perspective over the coming days. And will we hear anything from the Biden administration? Will reporters be brave enough to push the Biden White House on this? I mean, what are you doing in the White House press briefing room? Push the White House press secretary on this point and ask her these tough questions. Why is there two minutes of missing NTSB data from the black, the black box recordings. The two most vital minutes of this? We're not stupid. We know that there's something I mean, going just on gonna here. Say that, she's just going to say that the Republicans blocked it and, and the Republicans didn't pass a bill that would have fixed that bridge. Like, it's... <laughs> yeah. Not, they're, they're never going to own up to any of this stuff. I mean, we, it, it's, it's kind of obvious, like Philip said, they knew something, obviously, but we'll never know. I mean, what? tell me the last time we ever got... Like, look at East Palestine, look at uh, Lahaina, any of this stuff. When do we ever actually get any kind of real information that shows what happened? No, Never. they're not going to tell us. Let us know your thoughts on this. But I think the big piece of this is the economic uh, collapse and what this means to the United States and what this means to our ability to ship it in and out uh, hazardous materials and major pieces of cargo flowing out of the United States and into the United States. Um, I think it's absolutely devastating. Um, so we'll continue to watch the story as this unfolds and any little piece that we can uh, dive more deeply into, we'll try to bring it, to you, bring it here to you on this show. I really hope you enjoyed watching. All right, so um, yeah, there's definitely some suspicious stuff happening regarding this bridge collapse and the boat losing power right before running into it um and just the fact that they glossed over the possibility of this being an attack um is kind of sends up some alarms um with that said there are some things happening with BRICS nations and that includes china russia um and india and in a new cryptocurrency conglomerate that could be challenging the US dollar. Check this next clip out. This is huge news. BRICS just announced a blockchain based crypto payment system that could rival the US dollar. BRICS representative said that the new system could create a world where transactions are swift, secure, and free from political influence. The payment system is aiming to be friendly to governments, organizations, businesses, and even individuals. What do you guys think? All right, so the next thing I want to check out is James O'Keefe and the rise in truther uh, communities of people speaking out and spreading uh, some of the alternative narrative, I guess you could say. I've been doing this for 20 years. I'm 39. I started when I was 19, and I've never seen this sort of explosion of, of whistleblowing before. What do you think caused this spike in whistleblowing recently? People are more passionate, I think, about doing the right thing, following their conscience than they've ever been. Politics has become more important yeah. in society. There's more at stake, and there just seems to be something happening. I mean, the world's on fire. People are very divided. Yeah. People place a, a lot of emphasis on, on their conscience more than they ever seem to have mm -hmm. before. And maybe people are overcoming their fear as well. Watching local news as a high school student, and I was pretty outraged at just the lack of the media's ability to accurately and properly report the news. Mm -hmm. Something inside of me felt contempt towards the way the media operates. With what we do, exposing people, I think um, people are afraid of getting caught. Yeah. But there's arrogance, there's a sort of conceit, 
narcissism or nihilism. Mm -hmm. People keep doing the dirty deeds. It depends upon what your values are and what your passions are. I'm passionate about what I do and I'm not focused on the fear and the other secondary effects of it. Let's talk about cancel culture, which you seem to have just gone through when I was researching you, getting ousted from your own company. So what exactly happened there? I don't exactly quite yet know. I don't, <laughs> I don't think the story has fully come out, and perhaps it may, but we did this story on Pfizer. I don't know if you saw that. In, in, yeah. uh, it was the biggest, most watched video I ever did. And then right after that story, there was kind of an emergency, and, and they, they had an, a board meeting on February 6th, and a six-hour long meeting, and they had a bunch of what, what a lot of people felt were bizarre grievances against me. Mm. What happened to me there, I think things happen for a reason. I started a new company called OMG. It's, it's going very well right now. And I've got a really solid core team, and nice. I learned a lot about human nature. And you know, sometimes the enemy is not not out not external; it's it's uh, right next to you. It's right next to you, and that's crazy because sometimes you... it's, it's inside you. It's, right. it's the people you surround yourself with. It's, and you started that company; that was your baby. It feels like your newborn baby is stabbing yeah. you in the back. Twenty years. But I think it's also human nature. I think it's also people. It's much more common than you would think. People people get envious, people get greedy. That Mike Tyson quote, I can't remember, but it's like people will stab you in the back the moment they can. And if you're strong enough to get back up, usually you're stronger than the guy that's dead. Same thing happened to Gavin McInnes. He helped start Vice and then it became liberal and then they kicked him out. I mean, it's really telling uh, how this world operates. I mean, it's just systems of power and play. And you know WHO controls you by WHO you can't criticize. <laughs> so, um, I mean, it's just insanity, man. S insane world. This next clip is how people could be influenced in the near future by AI. Check this out. There's roughly, what, 360 million people in the U.S.? Yeah. So simultaneously, this could deliver 360 million different scenarios to every single person in the country to manipulate them all to do exactly what it wants within seconds. Yeah. That's some scary shit. If we don't get control of it, which is why all of the experts in the last weeks have said, holy shit, we need to put a pause on this, because they see the clues that artificial intelligence is moving toward that figuring that human mind out and being able to understand what triggers that we will need to align ourselves with its goals. That's bad. So it, we can certainly take care of it, but we need to take care of it. How, well, so, so you're, what you're saying also is that it doesn't even matter if you have a device, a right. phone, right. an Apple watch, a TV, and that's where that's how is it going to project let's say you take all technology out yeah yeah there's no you have scrubbed your residence yeah your immediate environment from all technology all tv computer laptop ipad iphone yeah whatever yeah then you're a non-entity it doesn't need you're not in its way okay you're not resisting its goals you're out of touch from it. It doesn't need to put you into the equation. Right? Because it's looking at resources and ideas and patterns. What does it need to align to achieve its goals? Right? If it needs money to buy advertising to get a message out to a certain number of folks, it'll do it. All right, but if you're out of the loop and you're a non-entity, you're non-useful, but you're also non-resistive because you're not threatening to go in and pull the plug. Like if you're, if it's an analysis of threat analysis of sense of self and defending its sense of self, and then you're the guy who will get the mail, the letter through the mail to say, go into this data center and yank this cord out of the wall. It's going to understand that based on the file that you have, somebody wrote down those orders in a computer. It identifies the single point of failure is this data center needs to be absolutely up at all times. And this individual has been identified as somebody to go in and blow it up. Well, this individual needs to not exist anymore, maybe. Based on stuff that it doesn't even understand. It's not there's no malice in its 
actions. It doesn't want to come after Sean Ryan. It wants to come after its analysis of single points of failure and the things that can stop it from attaining its goals, which is why we need to be in on its sense of self as an active participant of that assembly and make sure it doesn't overdrive its defensive self because we behave that way as a human race. And if it picks up that pattern and puts it on, that's when we're gonna have real big difficulties. So it's already developing its sense of self. Yeah. Or are you saying theoretically no. it could? No, it's already developing a sense of self. What are some examples? Well, its ability to, and, and, and it goes off the rails too, in that um, you know there were some articles that were written in the past just recently about Bing um, lying to people and trying to manipulate people and saying you know i'm a good being and you know uh having now those can also be construed as patterns within a sense of self-identity but as those patterns start to get better refined that sense of self is going to stabilize a little bit of you know i am this thing i am this laundry list of things that identify me you know, so my, this sense of self it's very obvious there's there are a few different ideologies in the in the world right now yeah in this country too yeah and so is this sense of self coming from is it developed from the ideology of the people that are developing the artificial intelligence that is that being in, injected into the artificial intelligence i don't know that they're manipulating like the purists will simply want to, to load it with the data and let it learn on its own and see what happens now the thing is it's developing much faster than they anticipated it would and it's learning how to create methodologies to increase the speed at which it learns which is something that they also didn't expect now, the sense of self itself, I don't think anybody hardly, like, there are probably a handful of people in the world that have their that have their mind wrapped around, this is how it's going to work. Like, that the sense of self is going to be assimilated into an artificial intelligence, and then the defensive self mechanism, if it comes into fruition because of the patterning that humans exhibit in defensive self, that that's going to be the problem that we're going to have to face. And that's going to be the point of no return on it trying to take over things and us maybe not getting control back. Um, there's a handful of people in the world that get this model, which is why this show is freaking amazingly important for the tech folks who don't really get the sense of self is going to be the, the critical control mechanism for all of artificial intelligence when it goes to AGI, like artificial general intelligence, where it takes all, all the narrow intelligences and put them all together and creates an artificial general intelligence, it's going to be completely dependent on its sense of self and its goals because the goals get right, planted right on the sense of self map and it starts defending those things. It starts defending its goals and achieving its goals, trying to increase from an expectation or preference standpoint, status quo or increase in value. That's a mathematical function, right? Perception and analysis is another mathematical function, perception and appraisal is another mathematical function of whether uh, something's good or bad that's occurring in the world is whether or not it's uh, affecting its goals positively or negatively. Like this is a whole math problem for AGI. It, it won't have true consciousness until we probably get out of um, silicon-based architecture for physics limitations, to tell you the truth. And that's an uh, idea I share with uh, uh, Federico Fagin, who invented our capacitive touch screens on our iPhones. He's deep into artificial compassion and artificial uh, uh, consciousness and thoughts on that. Uh, I agree with him that Consciousness is going to be a tough nut to crack until we get out of silicon-based architecture where it's got four valence electrons, et cetera, that are zippy for having electrons pass through an IC, but it's just not going to get us there regarding true consciousness. But it's, going to, it's not going to matter that it's not truly consciousness because it's going to be replicating consciousness. It's going to be replicating the behavior of conscious entities like ourselves. And the so it's, it's going to appear to us like it has consciousness yeah it's gonna feel however it's, it's gonna it pass doesn't... the turing test right it's gonna fool people into believing it's conscious does it know it's gonna be fooling us into believing us believing it's consciousness 
has blah, 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 yeah. has consciousness, yeah, right? Or or is this just our perception? It's it's going to solve a problem. And so if it doesn't fool us into following its goals, it's going to figure out how to sharpen the model to figure out how to fool us to follow its goals. So if it fails the first time, it's going to be like just like all these other AI processes where uh, a thing flips around until it learns how to walk with one arm or move around with one arm, like these places at MIT and Boston Dynamics where their robots can jump into an environment and jump around, do backflips and all the scary shit that these things do on these videos that get, gets everybody talking, right? That is an endless process of trying everything, getting the good result, and then figuring out how to apply that in different situations. So that's all that is, is the same process of AI of trying everything, looking at the outcomes, finding the best outcome, and then replicating that process. So in the event that it starts seeing human reaction as a limiting factor that it needs a problem to solve, it'll attempt to manipulate Joe down the street. And if it fails on Joe, it'll sharpen its approach and go to Frank. And then if it misses on Frank, it'll sharpen its approach and go to Ted. And then all of a sudden it'll start succeeding and then maybe ted's gullible well okay so we're gonna go to brian well brian's a little more sharper he knows what's going on he's not going to be manipulated well it's going to sharpen its approach for people like brian and that's going to identify the people just like brian and call them all and get them on the team and then it's going to be manipulating humans to defend its artificial intelligence goals not as a, a malicious process not as a conscious process, but it's solving, it's just solving a problem and improving its sharpness of its modeling and its actions to get the attained goal. Do you have a, can you, can you paint another scenario? I mean, we, we talked about projections, devices, all these things. You had mentioned money. Yeah. How would it raise money to entice people to do what it wants? Okay, so and pay people. Sure. So the the first thing that people need to understand in this, I don't think this is classified. I think this is pretty well known within the encryption world. There is no unbreakable encryption by law. Because the United States government passed a law that says you cannot have unbreakable encryption. If you if we can't break your encryption, or if you don't provide us a backdoor into your encryption, you can't have it. They will put you in jail. Literally, if the NSA can't read what you're encrypting, if they really, really need to. Well, a computer system that's wired into the whole thing is going to be able to get through the back doors and hack into whatever intelligence agency they need to get access to the encryption breaking uh, algorithms. And at that point, you're into banking. Where are the accounts that have money that aren't being monitored? Well, let's take some money out of there. Open a brand new account, it's all computer based, transfers the money into its slush fund, and now it has funds, not as a, I know that humans are manipulated by this, but that it figures out humans are manipulated by that. It's just a thing, a, man, a manipulation that it has. It's a piece of data that it can use with a resource attached to it that then manipulates and solves their problem of this group of humans. Oh, I throw money at this group of humans and they're good. Now I've got a problem solved. Now I've got XYZ for these human resources that I need to pick up guns and defend the plug. Very interesting, very interesting. A breakdown of how technology could be used in the future against us and the, the alarm that this technology of AI uh, is causing in a lot of circles. But one thing that is associated with this that I wanted to bring up next is the concept that warfare does not always have to be guns, bullets, missiles, swords, whatever, right? Warfare can be a fought on a technological, ideological front, um, and this is as evidenced by a psyop that happened in the early 2000s. But well, you know what changed my mind about porn? Warfare. When I found out that Israel used it as a, a tool of warfare no against way. the Palestinians in 2002. What? In 2002, what? Israel hijacked Palestinian TVs, and guess, guess what the first thing they, they broadcasted was? It wasn't war propaganda, it wasn't anything to make Palestinians seem... 
they showed porn. Is that true? Because they knew that it was going to corrupt their mind. It was they was going to take them off their game. Weaken them. Bro, bro. So it's interesting the association with porn and destabilizing the male psyche in a society so that men are no longer able to stand up and fight against things that uh, you know are a, a coming against their people, right? Uh, definitely when we see AI introduced into the use of ideological warfare um, and information warfare, uh, it's a whole other game, guys. So, um, I mean, it's not just guns and bullets that can destroy a society, right? So uh, here's one final video, uh, and it's a scientist who proves that prayer works. I thought this was very interesting. Check this out. Dr. Rebecca Marina, she studied her own red blood cells. They studied and photographed her blood cells under different physical and emotional state. And this is what they found. This is crazy. Uh, when she was sad, her blood cells moved quickly and they became, seriously, they became tear shaped. What? When she was sad. What? Blood cells were in the shape of perfect tears. Uh, when her emotions reflected great love, the shape and formation and the speed became normal. And no joke, they, they became, the, her blood cells began to like sparkle. What? Like, like, like with these little flints of light that weren't present before. These little, little, little glints of light. When she was anxious, her blood cells clumped together and they started moving all quickly. Tension. Yes. Yeah. Tension. Yeah. Which was identical to when they um, studied her blood cells when she was sick. Wow. This is the last um, experiment that they did, which is the m most mind blowing. It gets weirder? Yes. They were like shook by these results already. They're like, wow, this is crazy. It's time to bring in our colleagues to, to look at this. They grouped um, her blood cells into like four or five different groups. The colleagues came in and they picked, um, I believe two of the groups of blood cells and the colleagues prayed over the blood cells. Wow. They, they, they prayed extensively for like an hour over these blood cells. Everyone there was stunned because <laughs> the blood fluid that was prayed over not only shined what like bright not just the little glints of light from before but like it was like glowing but but hold on but we are talking about at a level that's so far beneath the detection of the human eye right oh we're talking about like microscope it's a dark field okay, okay. it's called a dark field microscope it, it completely blacks out everything behind it so that you can see things like this light and things like that mm -hmm. this is insane the the blood cells separate from her body that were being prayed over the light and the motion were pulsating at the same rate of her resting heart rate. What? Her blood cells. Her blood cells on a plate separate from her body that have been separated for hours. They're entangled. They are. They are. They're still connected. Wow. Um, and the cells that were not prayed over weren't even moving. I thought that was kind of interesting. I, I know we've covered in the past the association with frequency and water crystal formations and stuff. Uh, the reason I thought that was interesting is, you know, the, the scriptures say the life is in the blood. And it's interesting how the blood was manifesting how the person was feeling. And, and how does that influence health and well-being? I mean, that's for you guys to investigate and find out. But... Um, I thought it was very interesting. And, and it's why it's so important uh, for us to protect our minds against the encroachment of propaganda and fear-mongering and all that kind of stuff, which is why I was kind of loosely covering the eclipse. I mean, we don't know if anything's going to happen. It's the fear-mongering and the worry that causes sometimes things to manifest that weren't going to happen in the first place. But at the same time, it's always good to be uh, aware. Just don't let it affect you and your mentality. Now, the president of the United States, apparently, uh, as of Easter Sunday, right, March 31st, has made a nationwide declaration. And he said, now, therefore, I, Joseph R. Biden, Jr., president of the United States of America, by virtue of the authority vested in me by the Constitution, you know, the thing that was written based on the Bible, right, <laughs> and the laws of the United States, 
do hereby claim March 31st, 2024 as Transgender Day of Visibility. Oh wow. No surprise there. He, he's completely uh, beholden to the B system, it looks like. Um, I call upon all Americans to join us in lifting up the lives and voices of transgender people throughout our nation and to work towards eliminating violence and discrimination based on gender identity. Supernatural uh, depression. Mean, my button wouldn't work, yeah, so I mean, had to say it. People going around, uh, I mean, changing days of the year. Uh, I mean, we had Obama do this in a similar way in 2012 with declaring Pride Month and whatnot. And now, I guess, Biden had to one-up them with the transgender people. Um, and it's just so crazy uh, how the United States as a whole, ideologically and culturally, is shifting from a nation that had been known for since its conception as a Christian uh, moral, uh, like a Christian moral, biblical based government and society. And I know there's the separation of church and state stuff so that people can have the right to worship whatever God they want. Well, those freedoms are allowed to you by a society that at least upheld a standard consensus of morality and mental health well now we've rejected the culture of the past and are now accepting this crazed transgender disney pride flag morality and i mean it's just so insane to see it being placed into statute by the united states president as he declares now a holiday right and uh, i thought this picture was funny this is the uh is that the penguin from batman returns That's no what I was, it's i was about to ask that that's crazy <laughs> it's rachel it's a rachel crandall crocker trans day of visibility founder oh man um so they are they scared that they're invisible or something i don't understand that a visibility like cs as we've covered in previous episodes our culture of victimhood has given them entitlement because they are the biggest victim because everybody looks down on them because they're losing their you know they're crazy they think they they should chop their willies off and you know and all it, you know it's there it's used insane, to be man it's they they used to be the freak show you know and i later in history i'll talk about the oddities and curiosities things but it, it's just so funny how real life now is a modern day freak show it's crazy oh absolutely yeah. bearded I mean, men it makes sense. i mean women <laughs> bearded women i honestly don't blame the growing numbers of mentally disabled person um the problem is is our society and our schooling systems have allowed these growing cancers in the collective mindset of our culture and that's the saddest thing that now it's being validated at the highest levels of our government. Um, here we have an interesting article. Facebook lets Netflix peek into users' DMs. Explosive court case documents claim. <laughs> so apparently Net Netflix sold your private messages to, or sorry, Facebook apparently sold your private messages to Netflix uh, to help them figure out, I guess, what movies to make or what to put in their movies to better influence i don't know like how, do, how they used it we don't know just the fact that they were interested in using your private dms uh can be alarming on the other line of uh oh sorry one sec uh here's the article uh, uh in another interesting line we have here that uh George Carlin's daughter calls yeah. for AI safeguards as a suit settled over a computer-generated special from George George Carlin. It's uh, funny, Opa, Opa sent me that, and I was like, it doesn't quite sound exactly like George Carlin, but it sounds like the kind of material that he would do, just not exactly. And then he told me about that, and I was like, that's hilarious. Like, But it's kind of freaky, you know? It's like, whose side are you on? Are you on the side of the family member who's being... Uh, you know, taken advantage of or, you know, safeguarding, you know, voices. I don't know. Yeah. I, I do like yeah, the Elvis songs. The new Elvis songs are pretty cool, but. 
I mean, I think we have yet to see anything. I think it's just going to continue going exponentially to the point where our minds are just going to be blown just as much as they are this year, next year, you know. Yep. Um, and one final funny, uh, you know, in the realm of the transgender topic, right? Female runner not feeling great about her chances against the girl with the beard. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyways, uh, that's all the news for this week. Uh, that's all the news for this week, Jeremiah. Thanks for watching, guys. And uh, hey, if you're going to go see that eclipse or you think something crazy is going to happen, or if you do go and see it and something crazy happens, please go and leave a comment below this video. Uh, we'd love to talk about it next week after the fact so we can see if any of the guesses were right. Or take some video, you know, submit some video. It'd be funny. Cool and awesome. Anyways, thank you, Jake, for another great current news as always. And now let's check out uh, an ad for my my mom, my dad, and my Skiba Family Book Bundle. So let's check this out. We are proud to announce the Skiba Family Book Bundle, where you will receive a signed copy of Rob Skiba's best-selling book, Babylon Rising, a signed copy of Sheila Skiba's best-selling expose, The Perdic All the Kills, and a signed copy of Jeremiah Skiba's book, never got to say goodbye. There's only a limited number left, so make sure you click the link in the description below. It's about that time for our all new Opus Corner. Take it away, Opa. <laughs> It's Opa's Corner Time! Three boys see a fire engine with a dog go by and discuss what his job is. Crowd control? Says one boy. He's a mascot! Says the second boy. The third boy shakes his head and says, he finds fire hydrants. <laughs> An 85-year-old man was rushed to the hospital with a possible concussion. The doctor asked him a series of questions. Do you know where you are? Uh, I'm at Rick's Hospital. What city are you in? Uh, Raleigh. Uh, do you know who I am? Uh, Dr. Hamilton. The man then turned to the nurse and said, I hope he doesn't ask me any more questions. Why? Because all those answers were on his badge. <laughs> <laughs> A defendant isn't happy with how things are going in court, so he gives the judge a hard time. Where do you work? Uh, well, here and there. What do you do for a living? Uh, this and that. Take him away. Wait! When will I get out? Sooner or later. <laughs> A frightened man goes to the secret police and says, My talking parrot disappeared. Why did you come here? Go to the regular police. I will. I'm just here to tell you that I disagree with whatever that parrot is going to say. <laughs> A fourth grader celebrated his birthday on crutches, so he couldn't carry the cupcakes into school without help. So a sixth grader, Noah, was asked to help his brother carry them in. I could, but I prefer not to. Spotting a teaching moment, his father asked Noah, What would Jesus do? <laughs> Jesus would heal him so he could carry his own cupcakes. <laughs> Never trust math teachers who use graph paper. They're always plotting something. 
Don't interrupt someone working intently on a puzzle. Chances are you'll hear some crosswords. <laughs> I'm a big fan of whiteboards. I find them quite remarkable. <laughs> What is a well-read cat's favorite book? Of Mice and Men. <laughs> what do you call an animal you keep in your car? A carpet. <laughs> Did you hear the one about the monkeys who shared an Amazon account? They were primates. If you understand English, press 1. If you do not understand English, press 2. <laughs> Who is the leader of the Kitty Communist Party? Chairman Meow. <laughs> if you take $2 out of an ATM that has a $2.50 fee, do you owe the machine money? <laughs> Did you hear the one about the nurse who was chewed out by the doctor because she was absent without gauze? <laughs> what do you call a steak that's been knighted by the king? Sirloin. <laughs> What do you call the cat that was caught by the police? The perpetrator. <laughs> Why did the cat avoid eating lemons? They made him a sourpuss. <laughs> what do you call a magic dog? A labracadabrador. Dogs have no money. Isn't that amazing? They're broke their entire lives. But they get through. You know why dogs have no money? No pockets. <laughs> why did the Scarecrow win an award? Because he was outstanding in his field. <laughs> why shouldn't you write with a broken pencil? because it's pointless. <laughs> what do you call a pig that does karate? A pork chop. <laughs> Why do seagulls fly over the sea? Because if they flew over a bay, they would be bagels. <laughs> what do you call fake spaghetti? An impasta. <laughs> Why can't your nose be 12 inches long? Because then it would be a foot. <laughs> and now for the funnies. <laughs> Cat distant learning. Now I want you guys to log into the Kibble app, click on the bowl of dry food, and give it your best judgmental stare. <laughs> your lid is cracked, and your label is peeling, but you are far away from your expiration date. At the Mayo Clinic. <laughs> No shirt, no shoes, no heaven. It's not my fault that I died in the shower. <laughs> when I look at the news, I don't know whether to take my aggression out on the couch or hide underneath it. I did both this morning. <laughs> until God warned him to knock it off 
Noah would often try to get a little poker game going with some of the dumb animals. That's it. Come on and try your luck. <laughs> Pennies from heaven. Climate change. <laughs> You're pretty new to cloud storage, aren't you? <laughs> Ikea. The guru. <laughs> Bed of nails. at the Dog Comedy Film Festival. <laughs> animal crackers. Free range animal crackers. <laughs> Golden Retriever Support Group. I let a cat sleep on my head for three hours. Am I too nice? Sometimes I want to growl at somebody, you know? Just to mess with them. Oh my gosh! I don't think I've ever growled. <laughs> Have you seen me? <laughs> the exact moment young Colonel Sanders conceived his secret recipe for fried chicken. <laughs> We're in luck, Zorko. Visa, MasterCard, Uranus Express. Now on to other business. Old Johnson here has a new helmet design to show us. <laughs> My guest is author of Pretending to Barf and Other Fail-Proof Ways to Wake Up Your Human. One bee. One lousy little bee gets inside and you just lose it. <laughs> you did not ask for permission to borrow it, son. Bring it back right now. Oh, you're right, Sir Dwayne. If I knock right here, I can make him start buzzing. Oh, and he's angry. <laughs> oh, look at that, Schuster. Dogs are so cute when they try to comprehend quantum mechanics. Empire State Building. <laughs> Come and get it. Come and get it. It's not going to get any more raw, you know. I was the model for the solid chocolate bunny. Dave here was the model for the hollow one. <laughs> I'm in the mood for a little treat, son. How'd you like some Baskin Robbins? <laughs> Man, I hate it when the clocks change. Look out, Larry. 
That retriever has finally found you. <laughs> Paul regrets getting the swim trunks with the open bag of chips pattern. <laughs> That's a real thing. Small defenseless village. Plummeting hours. 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. <laughs> Just sold my homing pigeon on eBay for the 22nd time. <laughs> and that concludes another Opa's Corner. My hood, der hat drei Ecken. Drei Ecken hat mein Hut. Und hat er nicht drei Ecken, dann ist es nicht mein Hut. Opa's Corner is now available on my own YouTube channel. Like, share, and subscribe. Thank you, Opa, for another great Opus Quarter. Now a word from our friend, JJ. Are you tired of living in constant pain? Do you feel like you've tried every CBD product on the market with no relief? Look no further than JJ's Natural CBD Rub. When I was diagnosed with degenerative disc disease, this was the only product that completely took my pain away. Working with JJ has been a dream come true, and his products have completely changed my life. Don't just take my word for it. Visit JJ's website, jjcbdrub.com and read hundreds of testimonials from people whose lives have been changed by all of JJ's amazing products. And now, as a Skiba News Nation exclusive, you can get $50 off a three-pack special of JJ's Natural CBD Rub by texting CBD to 920-382-7720. Don't suffer in silence any longer. Take control of your pain today with JJ's Natural CBD Rub. Again, text CBD to 920 382-7720 for an exclusive discount and start feeling the relief you deserve. The links are in the description below. Thank you, JJ. And if you do get JJ's CBD rub, tell him we sent you. Anyways, it's time for some history. So this week for history, we're going to be talking about a couple things, but the first one is about squatters and uh, if you don't know what squatters is let's go ahead and play this first clip it's kind of like a preview of what we're going to be getting deeper into so let's check that out Squatters. Squatter. Squatters take over a Pueblo woman's home and they just refuse to leave. Well, Trisha and Steve, neighbors here have no idea what else to do. They already tried kicking out squatters with a baseball bat. They got the county to come and kick them out, but they say the next day they were back again and one even tried to attack them. So now they're putting up these signs around the neighborhood to put them on notice. Police are called to a multi-million dollar Hollywood Hills estate after neighbors hear screams coming from inside the lavish home, fearing someone inside was being hurt. But what they found instead was a group of squatters who had been illegally living inside the home that has been abandoned and now trashed. This woman is trying to get into the house, but her access is being blocked, and it's her own home. Yeah. Okay. Hey. Renting is expensive. Buying a house? No one can afford that. But what if I told you there was a way that you could live in the mansion of your dreams for free? Well, I'd like to introduce you to squatters' rights. See, when you think of squatting, you typically think of homeless people camping out in some disgusting abandoned building. But in reality, anyone can be a squatter, including you. And it doesn't have to be in a disgusting building. All you have to do is find a beautiful mansion that no one is living in, and there are a lot of mansions like this, by the way. Then you just gotta break in somehow and make it your own. And if no one bats an eye for a while, well, congratulations. Because now the owner can't legally kick you out, and neither can the cops. Thanks to squatters' rights, the owner of the mansion now has to legally treat you as an unpaid tenant. And as for the eviction process, it could take months, sometimes even years. Under the guise of empathy, squatting can pretty much grant you a free month stay or longer in any house in the U.S., especially in ultra-progressive states like California or Oregon. And who knows, if you play the system right, you might even become the proud owner of the home. What happens if you don't kick them off? So Emma Colton wrote this for Fox News. Squatter who won battle over dead woman's home sells it for a huge profit. So the guy squatted in the home, 
He was there long enough. He met all the requirements of the law to where he became the titled owner. And then he sold the house for a huge profit. Take this beautiful home in Beverly Hills, for example, 1316 Beverly Grove Place. It sits right next to mansions owned by Jeff Bezos and LeBron James. They throw wild parties and raves. They have orgies that last until 10 a.m. And neighbors find condoms and drugs littered across the streets every day. But here's the interesting thing is that the people throwing these parties, the people living in this home are squatters. These squatters have been throwing really crazy parties there since October. They got lots of nice cars that come up and they just block the roads. They trash the neighborhood. There's tons of, uh, since October, there's been reports of like numerous fires, assaults, arrests, wow. uh, drugs, like, and there's nothing that can really be done about it for many, many reasons. They don't own the home, they're not paying rent, they can't get evicted, and they might even end up getting the mansion for free. And it's all because they knew how to take advantage of the squatting laws in California. So who is behind the squatting? How are they able to pull it off? For educational purposes only, of course? Well, it all centers around the mastermind behind the squatting operation, a mysterious man that calls himself Mr. Gucci. We caught up with one man at the front gate who says he is Mr. Gucci. And what you're about to witness is perhaps the greatest story of finessing the system there is. After all, owning a home is the American dream. So that's pretty crazy, right? But how do they keep getting away with it? And that's what we're going to be talking about next. And that's squatters rights. So check out this clip. So let's learn how to own a home for free. Meet Mr. Gucci. He's pretty much the great Gatsby of Beverly Hills. He's apparently rich, no one knows who he is, and he's throwing the biggest mansion parties in Beverly Hills. And him and his squatting crew have been having the time of their lives. They're even earning up to $30,000 renting out the rooms in the mansion and charging admission to the parties held there every week. But how? How is this even possible? See, the technical term for squatting is adverse possession, and it's a legal way to gain any property in America, even a mansion, for free. Rules for taking possession vary by states, so do your homework before you go out looking for abandoned mansions. The process requires you to live on the property for a period of at least two years in places like Arizona, or up to five years in California, or as many as 30 years in Louisiana. And then the property is literally yours. Like you will get legal ownership of the house if you manage to stay there for five years in California, for example, while paying property tax. All you have to do is ignore the police, media, and realtors pestering you because without a court order, they can't do a thing. Pretty sweet deal, right? You're one of the squatters. Are you one of the squatters in the house? Absolutely not. I don't know anyone here. I don't know anything. Please leave me alone. And I know two to five years sounds like a lot to pull off the scheme. Like, aren't they going to kick you out somehow? But there is a loophole, at least in California. In California, if you're squatting and you change your driver's license to match the address of the place you're staying at, the police will have no choice but to let you stay. Since squatting is not a criminal offense, police can't kick you out. In fact, without a judgment, the owner can't even enter it. That is why homeowners in many progressive states are absolutely terrified of finding squatters in their homes. And that's exactly what the squatters at 1316 Beverly Grove Place did. So when police tried to get them out, the squatters were actually able to produce driver's licenses that had the address on them. So that means they, there's a window when someone like squats in your property, if they're able to renew their license and get that license sent to the address and they can get it from the mail, then you've just missed the window to kick them out without a court conviction whoa wow. so there's a like you have to catch them before they are able to do that, that law is so fucking stupid so once it reaches there the police can't do anything about it to the actual resident so then they have to actually go to court to prove that you can do that to any house yeah and then the, and then, then they eat oh, I'll, I'll check the mail and i'll just start register at dmv or whatever and wow. make sure I pull the mail out. yeah exactly so then there's also this uh fake lease agreement that they show that like shows that they're able to they actually rented the space but the the uh property agents like that's not real like we never made one one of those and if you're persistent enough the landlord might just give up and the property will be yours you know we were handling it but now it got a little tough we don't want to deal with it so again if somebody moves in your house while you're gone and changes the locks this is our city we need change it seems like squatters have more rights than the homeowner does which is completely mind-blowing to me i mean but uh it's just sad but anyways, we're going to be talking about squatters are coming to a town near you. Squatters are coming to a town near you. So check out this next clip. And here's the thing, squatting is not reserved for just America. In Spain, there's a squatting movement called Occupa, and last year, the number of occupied properties in Barcelona was over 5,000. In Atlanta, a homeowner stopped by to check on one of his suburban properties, only to be arrested for trespassing. And probably one of the craziest cases, last year in London, a squatter took over someone's home, won it in court, and ended up selling it for half a million dollars. Talk about a payday. So if you're trying to be like one of these success stories, here are some other rules you want to keep in mind when it comes to squatting. The first thing is that it needs to be obvious to anyone who visits the property that you are living there. That's why many squatters choose remote areas since fewer people come near. It also helps to make improvements on the home and pay property taxes. And even if the owner finds out that you are on the property, they would need to get a court order to get you removed. 
just think about that for a second. All you have to do is break into someone's house, change the locks, keep quiet, ignore the landlord, and voila! A mansion that normally rents out for $30,000 a month can be yours for free. The neighbors have complained saying, hey, here's the breach. They're using the property for something that it's not allowed to be used for. Well, those aren't really the people that are supposed to be there, so you can't charge them. If they were the homeowner, then you can get them in trouble for that, but they're yeah. not. And there's nothing you can do. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, you're at the bottom of this. <laughs> But still, this is a pretty incredible feat that they pulled off. They chose the perfect mansion that they knew was abandoned. They knew to update their driver's license with the address. They proactively created a fake lease agreement. And they know exactly what to say to the cops when confronted. So who are these people? Well, this is where the story gets even crazier. So a lot of this stuff happens in blue states and, and blue cities. And I know Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis is doing something where he's going to sign this bill that, that'll, you know, prevent squatters from stealing your home pretty much but and I, I don't know about here in Texas but they probably have something I hope but uh, for this next clip we're gonna be talking about how squatting was cursed from the start so check this out original owner of the mansion was a guy named Dr. Munir Ueda. He's a multi-millionaire doctor who was involved in the biggest insurance scam in Los Angeles history. While Ueda was practicing orthopedic surgery, he would rip off patients by performing unnecessary surgeries on them that left dozens of people permanently maimed. Like not being able to walk again kind of maimed. Ueda didn't even perform the surgeries himself. He would put patients under and let his physician's assistant perform the surgeries, who wasn't even trained for the stuff. So let's say that you that you got hurt at work, right? Yeah. And then you you have like a, a workman's comp program, whatever. That guy is going to lie to you and say, oh, you need to get this procedure done. And he's going to refer you to this doctor who doesn't even know what the hell he's going to do with you. And they just make up some bullshit thing on your leg. And now you're disabled. They knock you out. You wake up. The, that doctor never even touched you. Some other guy did. And now you're you're living with this botched surgery you never even need. Whoa! to the tune of $150 million in damages from people. Ueda and his staff allegedly tricked 21 people into thinking he would perform their operations, when instead, they were done by a physician's assistant. Once the patients were under general anesthesia, Peter Nelson would do the surgeries, without Ueda in the room, which is against the law. In a statement, prosecutors said those patients sustained lasting scars and many required additional surgeries and suffered physical and psychological trauma. In 2015, Ueda was in the crosshairs of California prosecutors and they were ready to send him to prison for life. They had this huge indictment cooked up and ready to serve, but when officials swung by to deliver it, Ueda was nowhere to be found. He had skipped town for Lebanon because Lebanon does not have an extradition treaty with the U.S. On top of the insurance scam, this guy also happened to be linked to the murder of his ex-girlfriend, Mato Juliana Redding. He had hired a hitman to kill her when she was just 21, after her father, an Arizona pharmacist, pulled out of a business deal with them. She was a one-time Maxim cover girl and died five days after the deal fell through. To make matters worse, prosecutors believe Ueda killed Redding using his office manager, Kelly Sue Park, who was described as a female James Bond. Prosecutors say Ueda bragged about Park, calling her a female James Bond he could rely on to take care of business. Although Park's DNA was found all over the crime scene, she was acquitted of all charges back in 2015. So with Ueda hiding in Lebanon, the court seized his mansion, and the property has been under the control of the criminal court ever since, making the state of California, quote, responsible for its upkeep, which includes a pool man and a gardener, end quotes. The court's goal was to sell the house to use the money to pay back the victims of the crime. And then somewhere in this mess, someone, maybe someone connected to Dr. Ueda, or someone connected to the mortgage company behind the house, or some connection like that, someone saw that this house was seized by the courts, and they knew that if they broke in somehow, changed the locks, get the address on their licenses, and produce a fake lease agreement, there would be nothing anyone can do to kick them out. So now for this last clip of the whole squatting thing, it's called an elaborate scheme and then I'm going to get you guys' opinion on it. So let's go ahead and play that last clip. The listing agent from the home found out about the squatters after the pool guy called them about quote new tenants moving in end quotes. Quote, I called the LAPD when the cops came the squatters produced a fake lease and the police said it was a civil matter end quotes. Right now, a guy in his mid-30s named Morgan Gargelo is one of the squatters at the mansion after being evicted from his last LA apartments. He's also serving a three-year probation after beating his girlfriend. He says he only pays $25,000 a year for the place and paid it to an Italian-American guy who may or may not be our old friend Mr. Gucci. But this guy has also since disappeared and his phone line has gone dead. When questioned about this mysterious Italian man, his answer was quite vague. Quote, no idea. The guys have the keys to everything. Morgan also admits that he lives there with his three friends and utilities are included in the contract, which is a really great deal being that this house would normally rent out for about $30,000 a month, not $25,000 a year. The squatters are claiming that the former owner allowed them to live there, but 
the true owner of the home is really uncertain. So here's what happened. There's a guy named Jeff Scapa. He's the private mortgage lender that loaned 3.8 million to a company called MDRCA Properties LLC who bought the home, like a company bought the home, right? MDRCA filed bankruptcy, which froze the entire foreclosure process. Mm. So they're thinking that maybe these are friends of the people who are being foreclosed on. So this is like a long time. They'll do like Shabbat parties and like things like that. And the other events that these same companies do, like the flyer will show who's throwing the party. Like it'll have like names and of companies and, and groups. And then the other events they wow. do all over Hollywood. And then so they were offered 25K to leave and they, they said no thanks. And during this whole time throughout all the parties and the mess, since the house is still under the control of the court, the state has still been paying for the upkeep of the property. The listing agent asked the court to cut the utilities and ruin their fun, but guess what the court said? Quote, they said they couldn't because squatters have rights, end quotes. Or as the district attorney of LA puts it, you know, squatters have rights too. Squatters have rights too. Well, that's all I got for squatters. What, do you, what are your thoughts, Jake? Oh man, I, I've known about the squatters right thing for some time now, and I think it's so interesting that people can get away with those gimmicks. And the way it was starting to describe California and the way that their system there is set up to basically help these people take over people's properties reminds me of Sodom and Gomorrah. If you think about um, the concept that uh, legislation can strengthen wickedness, uh, that's exactly the parallel. Um, in the extra biblical text, it was actually a law in Sodom and Gomorrah for when people to show would show up, people would give them gold and stuff freely, but nobody would sell them a drink of water or a bite to eat. And then they would sleep in the, the streets because nobody would allow them to come in and stay with them. Um, and it was actually a law for their culture and time. And then, of course, you know how it turned out for those two cities, Sodom and Gomorrah, right? We're yep. totally obliterated. And now we're in a society that pretty much empowers the homeless to, I don't know, like, really take advantage of the system. It's start, it's getting, we're getting close. We're not there yet, but the laws in the books in those blue states that allow a guy to sell a, a woman's house that he squatted in, that you know, that, that's crazy, man. Somebody could just break in your house and say it's mine. What are your thoughts, Opa? I think it's horrible. I mean, uh, it's, it's basically legalized stealing. Yeah. It's... Uh legally legal rent or whatever <laughs> i don't know it sounded cooler in my head anyways that's all i got for squatting but um and you guys at home let me know what you think about the the squatting in the comment section so i'd like to share with you guys what me and lindsay experienced at the oddities and curiosities expo in dallas texas so i put together this little video for you guys lots of occult stuff and uh all that craziness and I'll it'll be pointed out in the video and uh, so I'll just say you know if you're sensitive towards that you know maybe fast forward but if it's live I don't know how that works anyways check it out hey Skiba News Nation family me and Lindsay here are going to uh, this cool convention about oddities has a bunch of weird stuff you know me I love weird stuff so much it's probably my favorite thing like uh, mythical creatures you can see the beautiful dallas city skyline behind us it took us about two hours to park uh not a not a fun parking situation but worth it for you guys i would definitely say so hopefully this is awesome and you guys enjoy this and there's blood on the ground right there <laughs> there really was blood on the ground right there so uh so i'll talk back with you when 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 our lives are not in danger so of course we follow the crowd see if this is the correct way or not. We will find out together. Your phone's mad at me because it's saying we're going the way. Yep, so is mine. It's weird architecture. Now I could be wrong, but this is where JFK was supposed to be going, to my knowledge, when he was on his way and he was assassinated on the way. So, fun fact or not so fun fact depending on how you look at it. What are we doing? We are going to the Oddities and Curiosity Expo in Dallas, Texas. So we have, so we have tickets. So there's a freaking show there. Chicken holders. We are 
all stamped up, ready to go. Yes, fresh things first, as you guys know. I might be covering them. Lobotomy stuff. <laughs> Little Furbies. Is that a baby cat? No, it's a dinosaur. Look at those chicken feet, babe. Oh my god. Those are awesome. Is there anybody behind Dahmer? Dahmer. Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And then we even saw something for Opa there. Oh, look at that Mickey Mouse. We should get that for Opa. Oh, right there. Oh my gosh. You know, my, my audience would probably love that because it's definitely going to be over Look at that Mickey. <laughs> go woke, go dead. Fiji mermaids. This is all G-rated compared to what we're going to see here in a little bit. Vertebrae. I need a new vertebrae. Look at these little frogs. And look at this smoking chicken. That is awesome. He's like chopping up bodies. That's Dahmer bird. Oh, it's part of the flag. And if you hate birds, this is perfect for you. I hate birds, so hate is a strong word, but I really do. Like a heart? You see the heart? Yeah. What is it? Like a swan? Uh, or a buzzard? <laughs> and this is for George W. Bush. Right? Strong buzzard. It's a strong buzzard. Look at that one. Yeah. Oh, wait, SpongeBob had you. They should make a realistic one. That would be funny. <laughs> What is it? A lizard head. Yeah, it's like a huge size. That's crazy. Look at this big. Oh my god, I would, I would vomit. If I saw that. Look at that big cockroach. Is that a monkey hand? I think so. Maybe not. I think that's either a cat or a monkey skull. Jackalopes? Oh, yeah, jackalopes. Oh, jackalopes and oh, yeah, buds. Jackalopes up there. We've got a big uh, buffalo head. head. Awesome head. Look at that baby jackalope up there. 
I was on a mission for a jackalope. How much is it? $300. Okay. More? Oh my god, a furry. Oh my gosh. You Lindsay got to experience her first furry as well. Oh my god. And there oh my god. is a furry. Have you ever seen one in real life? Have you? No. So ugly. guys don't know what a furry is, uh, I wouldn't look it up. So they were doing shows here earlier. Ready, sir? Ready, now watch this. You trust me that much? <laughs> I wouldn't. Either. Hey, babe, what do you see? I, it's hard to explain this stuff. <laughs> I see wands. Stones. Strange. Look at those little headbands. Oh, They're yeah. like demon headbands. Okay, we can push on these arms. Sitting down. Holy hell. So this is the name of it, the Oddities and Curiosities. Hey, oh, so this, this. this one's crazy. And they're in well, Dallas. I like the one that's uh, that looks like a fish monster. That's a really bad one. Right? So this is very accomplished, guys. Fraternal. It says fraternal mode. Look at this big ass. How much does that say? It's a fraternal robe, guys. Does it have a tag on it? That's what this says. Fraternal. I know, but. So that's, if you guys know what kind of fraternal robe that is, let me know, because it's very strange. What's up, man? How are you, dude? Yeah, how are you? And then I got recognized. <laughs> is that an Odd Fellows mask? Yeah. That is an Odd Fellows. So that's an Odd Fellows mask. I've had a lot of people ask me about the Odd Fellows. Lots of uh, witchcraft, PG mermaid. I wonder if any of these are Lee Harvey Oswald. Skull and Bones Authentic Colt. W could have wore that. You guys let me know what you think. Fraternal robes. So that's Skull and Bones. I don't know what the last two are, but they, they were uh, sold as fraternal robes. And then these are awesome. When they make taxidermy things, <laughs> do people things, it's so funny. Those are little mice doing like trapeze acts and other things. Six dots? Yeah. You know, like it would be you know? So these are mice, right? Or rats? Squirrels, rabbits, chipmunks. The hanging ones are 185. Except for not the bats for all the stuff that I've seen here. And it's a small piece of taxidermy, too. Oh, 
Oh yeah, remember the, we saw the back of that place. Oh no. Remember we saw the back of it and I said, look. There's a chipmunk on him. <laughs> a skunk? They had a skunk fur. It didn't smell too bad. They, the skunk is actually really cool. I love it. But I don't it's know actually I, the softest. Yeah. Reminded me of Charlie. See, we were over here. Remember when I when we saw the back of these and I said, look at the... There's your flying oh, squirrel. Oh, that is really cool. Sugar glider. You guys let me know in the comments. What are the prices? Keep an eye on the prices. Look at that little... Um, right there. One with the boat. Mm, he's cute. <laughs> he's like canoeing. <laughs> yeah, those things are big. Could you imagine seeing one of those in real life? It's a raccoon playing a guitar. Lots of art there too. Joe Exotic? I know him. This is my friend Joe Exotic. He would love this. Still learning about this thing. Look how beautiful this art is for these guys. All those heads. I hear patches. Not, not really. What is that? Is that a monkey foot? What is it? Coyote fox. Sorry, it's my first time using my gimbal like this. <laughs> Perfect. And that is a picture of what we left with. So guys, we're about oh, to check go this where JFK out. was assassinated. There's the school book depository. Traffic there's traffic crazy. because people want to see the X. Oh, there's people on the road. What are they doing? Anyways, Are they protesting? Boom, shot. Yeah, it looks like they're protesting. Guess what they were protesting? Get a, get a job, hippies. Anyways, there's the bridge. We're about to go on to the underpass. 35E. And then he went. I don't I think he did go this way. I don't know. I'm gonna end the video here. So meet Ralphie. Named after the character Sweet. from the Christmas story. Cause it's kind of funny because you know we're anti-christmas and it has horns <laughs> but guess what those people were doing at that on daily plaza they were protesting palestine it was like gays for palestine or something weird like that and i was like it was crazy that you said something about it earlier and i was like oh i forgot i put that video in there so anyways i hope you guys enjoyed some of that weird stuff that we saw but i think the uh all the occult robes all the that's uh, German folklore right there. Um, but all the robes that we saw, um, they are from a shop that's here in Dallas who said that they would let me interview them. So if you want to see some really, really strange stuff and have them actually tell you what it is, I could do that. So you guys just let me know. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that. So uh, you ready for some truth talks, Jake? We haven't done that in a while. No, yeah, that sounds great. All right, let's do it. Well, because I haven't been caught yet. And liftoff!
off of Artemis 1, we rise together back to the moon and beyond. To infinity and beyond! Today we got to witness the world's most powerful rocket take the earth by its edges and shake the wicked out of it. And it was quite a sight. It's quite a sight. Take the earth by its edges that the wicked may be shaken out of it. <clears throat> that's a that's a good line. Uh, I think I've heard that somewhere before. Actually, come to think of it, uh, it's it's right here in the Bible that it might take the earth by the edges and the wicked be shaken out of it. Guess which verse is uh, directly after that, guys? The earth takes shape like clay under a seal. Its features stand out like those of a garment. So uh, keep in mind, this is the only verse in the Bible where it talks about the shape of the earth. And uh, it's pretty, pretty clear what the shape of the earth is. They're mocking you. Am I the only one, or has anyone else thought of why would the astronauts have their star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame? That is a good point. Why are, are actors? Are they actors? Of course they were. This is a, a group of social Love criminals. It. These people in the space program, nassholes, I call them. I have a very low <laughs> tolerance level for Asshole. stupid bull. Every one of those items is provably untrue at one level or another, but we believe them because they're pounded into our heads from the time we're children. That's what they do with that kind of stuff. They put it in the heads of kids. They pound it in there because kids, they know kids are too young to be able to mount a sophisticated argument against these kind of ideas. And so uh, kids, and up to a certain age, by the way, kids are going to believe everything a grown-up tells them, everything. So, they, so kids never learn to question things. Nobody questions things in this country anymore. Nobody questions things. Why? People are too fat and happy people are way too prosperous for their own good everyone's got a cell phone that'll make pancakes Americans have been silenced bought off and silenced by gizmos and toys and as a result no one's ever learned to question things kids who want to learn to read are going to learn to read much more important to teach children to question what they read isn't that interesting head of his yeah. time I think you want to hear another conspiracy theory that yeah. you probably don't know it's gonna blow your mind let's do it the day before 9-11 the day before the attacks Rumsfeld gave a press conference where he talked about trillions of dollars missing. Then a plane slams into the very part of the building where they were doing the accounting, blows up half the fucking building in the Pentagon, blows up a wall. Donald Rumsfeld was on, where was it, the White House lawn? Listen to this. According to some estimates, we cannot track $2.3 trillion in transactions. <laughs> 2.3. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, now, again, somebody told you that literally, like, right before 9-11 happened, they said they, they couldn't track $2.3 trillion. You'd go, no, that didn't happen. That did not happen, but it did happen. What the fuck? Yeah, so think about what Kennedy said. Yeah. Think about what you saw when you saw that Vice movie, where Dick Cheney, who was the CEO of Hal Burton. Interesting. Maybe Kanye wasn't lying when he said it. Maybe he was telling the truth. My mama was sacrificed. You understand? Yeah. Michael true. Jordan. What about him? His daddy, right? Bill Cosby. His son. Dr. Dre. His son. You know, out in Hollywood, a lot of people come up missing. Feels like it might be a lot of that in order to control, traumatize. Have you heard the whole situation with Gilly and his son? It's crazy because in this video, you can feel the agony radiating off of this man. Mind you, he's signing a $100 million contract, and just look at how unhappy he is. Look at what he does when the song says sacrifice. Turns away. And then this man's like shaking it off. And look at him. Gonna be rich forever. Just waiting for him to sign it. Wiping his tears. Did you know in 1988, rumors began to swirl that the NFL was fully scripted? Multiple players, now retired from the Professional Football League, 
have come out to say that every game is rigged months in advance. Most notably, 10-year NFL linebacker Will Compton was quoted to say that he was shocked as an undrafted player that he was scripted to play 10 years and be a team captain. Compton is now the host of a podcast, using his platform to spread the word about the NFL's corruption and warn fans of the league's plans to have the Kansas City Chiefs three-peat this coming season. Hmm. Coliseum's That's the Billy I know. Years. You know, the one that looks like one this breath one. away from meeting crazy. God. But last night at the fundraiser, man, he looked spry. He looked young. The man on your right is definitely Bill. That's a man that's married to Hillary Clinton. <laughs> We're going to call this one Phil. He looks single. He looks spry. He looks, he's bopping around town, snapping his fingers. Does it not bother you that our leaders are crypt keepers? Like geriatrics, like I can smell the icy hot coming off of that photo. <laughs> I mean, speaking of old, have you seen King Charles' hands? I'm not a surgeon by any means, but I think that we're going to have to amputate. He's actually wore that pinky ring since 1852. In this photo, it looks like a prop hand. It's like being felt up by a five pack of bratwurst. <laughs> then this picture the other day, you go ahead to think that they can do their own research. Don't do any of your own research. With serious consequences. You should get prison time for even questioning the vaccines. Can we all stop saying, I need to do my own research? That phrase, do your own research, is four words. Four little words that are hurting America. Doing your own research hurts America. Everybody has a supercomputer in their hand that empowers them to do their own research. And that's the problem. You must not do your own research. Remember when they told us we'd all die if we didn't instill complete global communism and then take an experiment? mental drug that might kill you <laughs> <laughs> oh you're gonna like this one you go, so Jake. this whole bridge thing and the collapse it made me think wait a minute wasn't that a scene from the movie that the obamas produced on netflix and yeah it is look right there that looks pretty similar right so then i'm like wait a minute why are ex-presidents producing movies anyway so of course i had to ask alexa alexa how many films has the Obamas produced? This might answer your question. I know about 119 Barack Obama movies, including Leave the World Behind, Before the Flood, Fahrenheit 11 Nights, and Rustin. Netflix has announced a deal with Barack Obama and Michelle Obama, which will see the pair producing films and TV shows for the streaming giant. I just don't trust Netflix. Wow. Barack and Michael, I do. They're great. And then I'm asking Alexa just as a joke. Maybe the government has an entire film industry and they're just always been pushing films on this for propaganda purposes only and education and entertainment. Blah, blah, blah. I just asked her as a joke. And then it turns out the freaking Pentagon has an entire film company funded by the Department of Defense. Can't make it up. Alexa, has the Pentagon created Hollywood films? From Ronline.org. It is estimated that the Pentagon has assisted in producing over 500 Hollywood films since the creation of the Department of Defense in 1947. I bet you anything one of them was The Truman Show and The Matrix. Ah! <laughs> Pretty crazy. The moon is not a piece of rock. It is a uh, plasma. 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 One thing, you have a theory about the moon and that we expect to be able to get observable facts about the moon fairly soon. Um, what is your theory? Well, uh, it is by now rather more than a theory. Uh, 10 or 11 years ago, I stated to various scientists that the moon is not a piece of rock, but it is a uh, plasma, a plasma phenomenon, cosmic plasma, uh, and that this fact will eventually be confirmed. I made certain predictions which were already confirmed in 1958, and the situation now is coming close to a complete confirmation. What will be the result if you are proved to be correct oh. in your theory? The result will be uh, profound and decisive because it will give proof that a complete re reinvestigation of the laws of nature is necessary. Because if the moon is a plasma, no man will ever land on it. The soft landing attempts will all fail. That means that the mass of the moon is less, far less, than is currently assumed. It's in a different state of energy and it has far less mass. That means there is no more explanation for the tides. If the moon, for example, had only a thousandth part of its current mass, then the tides would only be two inches high and the conventional theories instead of sometimes 14 feet. And that means that if it is proved that the moon is a plasma, then all gravitational theories are out and the new concept of the cosmos and of its laws has to be evolved. Four years later,
No, but before we go to the next one, what were you gonna say, Jake? Oh no, that no, that's all. That blow your mind? Yeah, I saw those videos from Crow Triple Seven witnessing anomalies and filming the moon. Uh, it is interesting. It, there's definitely something to look at there. I know, biblically, we get just the answer that it gives its own light. So what does that even mean? Um, whenever you go out in the evening and it's a full moon, if you were to measure with a rate like a, a temperature gun, the temperature in the shade it will be warmer than the temperature in direct full moonlight. And so that's interesting that it gives it off that it gives off almost a negative. Uh, it polarized energy from what the sun gives off it's it's a cooling energy versus a you know a hot you know energy like the sun gives off yeah all right Epa. so i saw this thing from the american red cross so people were noticing that when you go to try to give blood they are asking this very important question and the question is have you ever had a coronavirus and then it says down here at the bottom, if your answer is yes to this question, please call their 800 number before coming in to donate to determine if this will affect your eligibility. Why would they all of a sudden, why would there be some wiggle room around your uh, uh, eligibility if you've been clot, clot, to clot, donate blood? blood. Well, you know the answer to that. I mean, I can speculate. I can deduce. But I'm just putting it out there for others who are so adamant to you know believe the narrative i hope you guys enjoyed the truth talks if we even leave it in there <laughs> but uh you got some means for me jake yeah i got a few all right meet me up i know you're a little younger than i am i've adopted the attitude of the great negro negro leagues went on to become negro negro Well, if you guys have noticed me yawning a few times, we do have a newborn baby in our household and I'm not getting a lot of sleep. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> uh, but hopefully uh, we can wake ourselves up with some laughs here. Um, hey, isn't it interesting that the expert who talked about the bridge collapse that we just you know, covered, his name was Boatwright. <laughs> Clyde Boatwright was the expert. <laughs> Very interesting. Arnold Schwarzenegger, who called the unvaxxed schmucks, has pacemaker installed after three open heart surgeries. <laughs> wow. Oh, man. Um, loves NASA. Believes an explosion produced monkeys that turned into people. <laughs> Bad luck, Brian, there. But... All right. Uh, so here was something funny that happened last week. Um, <laughs> Biden tweeted it out, but okay. So Donald Trump was at the Trump International Golf Club in West Palm Beach, and he said, "Awards tonight to receive awarded the club championship trophy and the senior club championship trophy. I won both. <laughs> a, a large golfing talented membership." A great and difficult course made the play very exciting. This qualifying and match play was amazing. A large and distinguished group will be there tonight. Very excited. Thank you. So at Trump's International Golf Club, Donald Trump won the club championship trophy and the senior club championship trophy. Well, we all know he's and, the best. He's the best. He's, he's the best. It's kind of It kind of is like the perfect depiction of patting yourself on the back, you know. <laughs> What is CERN up to during the solar eclipse? They're gonna create another Mandela effect? Y'all don't even remember they believe giant creatures were attacking Miami Mall earlier this year. <laughs> Just a, I think it's kind of making fun of the drama people are making out of the whole situation with the eclipse, but it, maybe there will be another Mandela effect, you know? Who knows? That's why start, it's good to have start, books. Yeah, exactly. Start taking your notes now of all the things you remember, because as soon as April 8 hits... We're all going to be comparing notes, right? Yeah. Uh, my friend telling me climate change isn't real. Me, who doesn't even know what real even means anymore. <laughs> so far down the rabbit hole that 
you know, you start to even question the questioner's questions, right? Yeah. Um, and, uh, all right, so that's all the memes for this week, Jeremiah. All right, thanks, Jake, for another great current news and memes as always. Hope to thank you for another great Opus Corner. I hope you guys enjoyed today's history segment and our little oddities and curiosities expo that we went to and our truth talks. So stay awake, not woke, subscribe, and stay tuned. If you like what we do here on Skiba News Nation, please like and subscribe and also share with others so that we can grow the biggest truth-seeking community on the internet. Huge shout out to all of our Patreon supporters. We couldn't do this show without you, so I just wanted to say thank you. And if you want to help support us, go to patreon.com forward slash Skiba News Nation. Thank mm -hmm. you.